Welcome to Ubgal's OGI Academy. This is the fourth session about OGI leak quantification. I'm Dr. Ram Hashmanai, Principal Innovation Scientist here in Ubgal. OGI quantification, to put us on the same page, I would like to stress out that this is a very indirect measurement with its limitations and challenges. However, here in Obgal, we are using uh, the basic science and physics of radiation through the atmosphere in order to address and overcome these challenges. Uh, I would like to pay tribute to Professor Sean Tommy, who wrote the book Introduction to Mathematics of Inversion and Remote Sensing and Indirect Measurements. And again, OGI quantification is a very indirect measurement of the mass flow leak rate. The mass flow leak rate or the emission rate or the fluxes are all the same for quantification of, with OGI. So basically, when we talk about the leak rate, we are talking about a mass that goes through a plume, a concentration, integrated concentration that goes through a, through a plane, not through a plume, through a plane. And we, in order to know the rate that it goes through the plane, we need to know what is the wind speed. So it's essentially the product of plane integrated mass concentration times the wind speed. And if we look at the unit analysis of a year, uh, the mass flow leak rate is by mass per time, for example, gram per hour. The plane area is meter square. The mass concentration is gram per cubic meter. And the wind speed is uh, meter per second. And after we convert it to per hour, we need to multiply it by 3600. So in order to explain the physics, the underlying physics of the OGI quantification algorithm, we need to, to have some kernel functions. We need to have the, uh, the underlying physics like library inside the algorithm. So we look back at the OGI equation and we see here that the OGI equation as on the left side as the contrast. We have the contrast here. On the right side, we have here, I'm trying to see. We have the compound specific response that is a function of the camera's filter and the absorption coefficients and the concentration uh, of the gas. It's very important to understand that this is the underlying physics. It's not depend on the scene temperature differences. It's independent of the temperature, only on the absorption coefficient and the concentration. If we look at the compound term here, we can see here that uh, it's one minus the transmission of radiation from the background through the gas plume. I'm trying to see where is my cursor. It's right here. Times the transmission of the filter. And when we look at very close ranges, We can assume the transmission here between the background and the camera, the air between the gas plume and the uh, camera in very short ranges is equal to one. So we are left with this term compound specific response and it's one minus the transmission. And you can see inside the transmission through the gas plume is a function of the absorption coefficient of the gas plume and the concentration. So, for each compound, we need to look at the spectrum of this one of the compound specific response, which is one minus the transmission in different concentration. And here we have a plot 
between 1,000 ppm meters to 300,000 ppm meters. And we can see as concentration going higher, we can see that it's confined by the transmission of the filter. And it, this compound specific spectrum can never go above one because uh, when concentration is going very high, the transmission is going to zero and this term of compound specific spectrum, uh, response spectrum is going to one. That means that the radiation from the background is fully blocked by the gas plume. So in order to have in our algorithm some uh, relationship between concentration path lengths and uh, the CSR, we plot for each compound in different concentration, this integration on the filter of the compound specific uh, response spectrum and times the transmission. And we get here an example for propane and methane. And you can see two things about these two curves. One that they are very non-linear and the other is they are very different from each other. So we calculate for each compound that inside our uh, software package, we calculate this curve and we use this once we evaluate in every scene the compound specific response from the camera from the scene we can have some way to convert this to ppm meters so once we convert it to ppm meters we we can convert it to mass concentration through the gas density which is taking into account the molar volume and the molecular mass of each gas and once we have the, uh, the, the mass CL, concentration path lengths in gram per meter square, we can integrate this through a line of pixels downwind from the leak. And then we have the plane integrated mass concentration. And this is, this is in units of gram per meter. Calculation of wind speed through uh, movement during the data sampling period, we look at the movement of the plume from the leak outwards, and we can determine from these uh, movies, we can determine the wind speed. Once we multiply the plane integrated mass concentration uh, times the wind speed, we get the mass flow rate and report it. Typically, we do it over a half a minute or a minute uh, time period of data collection. Thank you very much for this session of uh, OGI quantification and see you next time. If you have any question, please do not hesitate to contact us at uh, info at Thank you and see you next time.